Bonsoir, bonsoir. Welcome to Kingdom Influencer. I pray that you guys are doing well. Um, let me start with the reading of the word. It is going to be a little long. I actually didn't want to read it, but the Lord, for some reason, has asked me to just read up until where he says stop. So I want to read the word first just to consecrate the video. And let's just do what Holy Spirit wants to do. Um, today we're reading from the first chapter of Ruth. Um, starting from verse 6, and it says, Sometime later, Naomi heard that Yahweh had visited his people and blessed them with an abundant harvest. So she decided to leave Moab with her daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth at her side. Naomi, Naomi began her journey to return to the land of Judah. But soon Naomi said to them, Each of you go back to your mother's home. May Yahweh show his loyal love and kindness to you. The same loyal love and kindness you have shown to me and to those who have died. And may Yahweh give you another husband and cause you to find rest in a happy home. Then Naomi tenderly embraced Oprah and Ruth and kissed them goodbye, but they wailed and sobbed. Through their tears, they said to her, No, we want to be with you and go with you to your people. My daughters, you must go back, Naomi answered. Why do you want to come with me? Do you think I could have sons again to give you a new husband? Turn around, my daughters, and go back home, for I am too old to marry again. Even if I thought there was still hope for me and married today and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they had grown up? Should you live should you live for so many years without husband? No, my daughters, you must not, you must not return with me. My life is too bitter. My life is too bitter to share it. My life is too bitter to share it with me because Yahweh has has brought calamity to my life. When they heard Naomi's voice, Oprah and Naomi wailed and sobbed. Then Orpah embraced and kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and went back home. But Ruth clung to Naomi and refused to let her go. I'm going to stop over there. So we see that Naomi said to them, to her two daughter-in-laws, go, go back home. Naomi presented um, arguments with them, right? That... She presented facts, arguments that showed why they shouldn't go with her. And we have one that went and we have one that didn't go. And what God revealed to me is that Oprah didn't get the chance to meet her kinsman, Redeemer. She was a good woman, but not as faithful and, and not as faithful and resolute as Ruth. Oprah didn't get to meet, or she didn't. She never. I guess she like never. She just never met her kinsman redeemer, and she died as she lived in Moab. This speaks to me about how. Sometimes in life, we give up too quick. We are too quick to make choices. And the choices that we make have a bad repercussion. The choices that we make bring forth a bad result. And sometimes we might even feel that, hey, because we made this choice, things are good, things are okay. But what if we went all the way. What if I didn't give up? What if I stayed strong? What if I didn't lose hope? We read um, in the story that there were various, there were, let, okay, let me not say various. I believe that there were various, that there were, let's say maybe five in my eyes, five or six, right? Around the Kingsman Redeemer at that time. And if they had both went, there was going to be one for Ruth, Boaz, and one for Oprah, right? But she didn't get the chance to meet her kingdom spouse, her second chance. She didn't get a chance to meet her kinsman redeemer. 
Because her faith just wasn't there. And sometimes, instead of us being like Ruth, we are like Oprah. We give up because of what we have seen. We give up because of what we have experienced. We give up because of what people are seeing. We give up what people are saying. We give up because of what we are seeing with our natural eyes. And we forget that we are spirit beings and that everything that we do, we need to do by the spirit. We need to be led by the spirit. She took the words that Naomi gave her and she allowed those words to produce a negative outcome in her. She allowed those words that Naomi said to shut her spiritual eyes and only focus on things using her physical eyes and only focus on her physical senses. She wasn't tapping into the spiritual. Ruth heard everything that Naomi said, but she was like, nah. I have heard of this God. Right now, we may be going through turmoil. We might be going through some hard time. But I have seen what this God has done. I have seen how this God has blessed my, this family. I have seen how my husband has spoken about this God. So I know that this God exists. And I know that if I stick around, that if I stick to those that know those, this God, I too will be blessed. I too will enjoy the fruits of this God. I too will enjoy the blessings of this God. And very often, especially with promises that we have been waiting on God for, for the longest time, we become like Oprah instead of becoming like Ruth. Ruth said, you know what? I am going to go. I have nothing to lose. Me getting to know this God, me trusting this God, I have nothing to lose. I come from I come from a tribe, I come from a family where they worship other gods. I've given this God a try, but now let me give another God a try. And to her surprise, she was never going to turn back from this God because this God had an appointment with Ruth that was already booked, that was already marked in place. And I don't want any of us to miss what God has Prepared for us in the future. Don't give up now. Don't despair now. Don't turn your back on God now. Don't turn your back on the promise now. Just because it doesn't seem like what God said at this very moment. As God was ministering to me concerning this. He took me to the book of Hebrews. Let me open here. He took me to the book of Hebrews. And in chapter 4, and starting from verse 2, it says, For we for we also have heard the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. So what is the good news that you have heard that other people have heard? What is the good news that has been spoken over your life? What is the good news that has been spoken to a collective group that you have already seen Some people live it, that you have already seen this word become manifest in this in in this person's life, but maybe not on your not in your life. Continuing, it says, but the message that they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. So here we can apply it to Ruth and Oprah, right? Because it says that it says that. The message that was heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. So the word was spoken and some of them obeyed because of their faith, but others, it was of no value to them because they had no faith. Remember how I said in the beginning, Oprah was a good woman. She stuck with Naomi until the very end, until they left Moab. But her faith, her faithfulness, her faith was not on the same level as Ruth's. Her resilience wasn't there. So they were both under the same household that believed in God. So the words that were spoken to Ruth, 
She kept it in her heart and she obeyed and she allowed faith to make her make the, the choice and the decisions that she made. While Oprah, in the other hand, the words were spoken, the message was given. It did nothing inside of her. It was choked up. It was of no value. That's why she turned her back and she didn't even see with her eyes of faith what was waiting for her on the other side. Verse 6, it says, Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news uh, proclaimed to them did not go because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day and calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice and do not harden your heart, for if Joshua had given them rest, would God would not have spoken later about another day. There, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also enters the rest from their work, just as God did for, uh, just as God did from him. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of the disobedient. Right? So what God was ministering to me here is that he is giving us a second chance to enter his rest. By entering his rest is us entering a place where we trust and we believe the words that God has spoken, the promises that he has spoken. And he is saying that today, the certain day which he is calling it today, he doesn't want you to harden your heart. He wants you to hear his voice. What has the voice of God been saying to you? What has God been speaking to you in these 24 hours or in less than 24 hours? What has God been speaking to you? God wants you to hear his voice and he does not want you to harden your heart. Do not harden your heart like Oprah. Do not harden your heart, but hear what it is that God is saying and follow his leading. And the part that I really, really, really liked was in verse 10 that says, For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their own works. When you believe what God has said, when you believe the promises of God, what happens to you? You don't have to do anything. You don't have to work for anything. Because once you believe God's word, you enter into rest because you understand that you cannot do it. If it's coming from God, you cannot do it. There is nothing that you can do that will make it happen. And to confirm this, as I'm reading this, um, it is confirming a revelation that I heard a man of God share. And let me get the scripture. This is, will be the last scripture that I will read. In Mark 4, 26, it says, He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grow, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, First the stalk, then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. And the reason why I say that this um, scripture, that the scripture that we read in Hebrew confirms this, is because everything that comes from God, everything that comes from the kingdom, 
Like it says, the kingdom of God is like a man that scatters a seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grow, though he does not know how. That means that he is not doing any work. That means that he is not doing nothing. Everything that comes from God, it is worked out by him. So all you need to do is rest in him if you find yourself trying to do things with the strength of your arm if you try if you find yourself trying to do things by your own knowledge by your own experience by your own wisdom it is not of heaven it is not of the of the kingdom oh it's you trying to stick your nose into the business of god when the business of god is all he wants from you all he requires from you is for you to accept his word for you to have faith in what he's saying and for you to enter rest, for you to enter his rest and for you to enter the rest from the works of your hand. Because everything that comes from the kingdom, everything that comes from God, he takes care of it. He takes care of it. He took care of Ruth and Naomi. He gave Naomi the right words to speak to Ruth. Ruth picked up. Ruth was obedient. She went. The leading of the Holy Spirit was upon her. She was spirit led. She was spirit taught. She was spirit guided. But everything happened because God had it in place. God worked everything out for her good. So two things that we learn here. Do not turn your back on the promise because if you turn your back on the promise, you are turning your back on your kingsman redeemer. You are turning your back on the connections that God has already set up in the future for you. You are turning your back on the open doors that God has already opened for you. You are turning your back on the promises that are rightfully yours. You are chucking those things away when God is saying, just keep traveling, just keep pushing, just keep believing, just keep being in this place of rest, keep being in in this place where you trust me. Keep being in this place where you are seeing things with your, with your spiritual eyes and not your natural eyes. Keep being in the place where I am at the center and I am your number one. And the second thing is, we need to remind ourselves not to put our nose in God's business. Because if you are certain, if you know with all of your being that what God promised you did not come from your flesh, did not come from you making it up, did not come from you prophesying from a place of flesh. If you are certain that it comes from God, then it is God's business. And, it, and because it's God's business, it will happen. Without you meddling with it. Without you trying to put yourself in the whole thing. He has given you rest from works so that he can do the work. Let God do the work. All you need to do is follow Naomi. Follow the Holy Spirit. Be obedient to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Not giving up. Not losing hope. Many of us have lost hope. 2022, many of us entered 2022 with really hope deferred, with really our hearts in a sunken place. And God is saying today, today, He's giving us an opportunity. He's giving us an opportunity to say, Father, I come back. I realize, oh God, that I have been hurt. I realize, Father, that... I have given up on some things. I realized that I have acted more like Oprah than more like Ruth. But I am here asking for forgiveness. I am asking for a fresh start. Let me trust and let me believe in your word. Let me go forth and follow your leading and follow your Holy Spirit. I do not want to miss my Kingsman Redeemer. I do not want to miss the connections. I do not want to miss the open doors. Let me not be influenced by what people are saying. Let me not be influenced by the people that have become bitter, by the people that have been, become discouraged, by the people that have lost hope themselves. Let me not be influenced by them. Let me not be influenced by them. The only person that I want to be influenced by is your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit influence me. Let your Holy Spirit lead me. Let your Holy Spirit guide me into choosing what you want me to choose, into going into the direction, into the journey that you have set apart for me. Let me not go.
where your spirit is not. I do not want to turn back. Forward is the way. Forward is the way with the Holy Spirit. So do not turn back. This is the word that I wanted to share with you guys. I love you guys. Um beju. Stay blessed. Then one more thing. Do not forget. 18th and 19th. I believe it's tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. We are having our gathering. The wait and after the wait. God has booked. God has marked that day to meet you. To have an encounter with you. So RSVP to God and come and have some time with God. Let him minister to your heart. Let him touch you. Let him heal you. Let him restore you. Let him do whatever it is that he wants to do. So I will see you guys tomorrow on our Zoom call. The link is on the community section. Umbeju, I love you guys. Bye-bye.